Hi! Welcome back and thanks so much for watching. So, uh, in the last video we went through this uh, rhythmic example, this uh, rhythmic example that's in 6-8 time. And there's just one thing I kind of want to talk about a little bit. Uh, that uh, it, it might be a question that you had, maybe it, maybe it wasn't, but uh, there's just one thing I do kind of want to talk about a little bit with the kind of convention of how I wrote rests, and specifically I'm going to talk about how I wrote out this measure. Hopefully you can see this yellow, that this yellow isn't just blending into the background. But I want to talk about how I wrote specifically the rests in this measure. So actually I'm going to take this and rewrite it down here so we can uh, so I guess we can uh, have a, a bit of a clean slate down here. Actually, you know what? That's not true. I'm actually going to just, huh. I thought I had done this on a different layer. Okay, I guess, I guess this is fine. I'll just uh, do this down here. Uh, but anyway, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to get rid of this layer. Layer new, okay. So, um, and actually I'm going to, you know what, actually, sorry, I'm just going to do this down here, and hopefully all this other stuff isn't, isn't too distracting on the page. But, uh, I just want to pose this example. Couldn't I have written this, because think about the, the number of eighth notes that were resting up here. So, this dotted quarter note is how many eighth notes? Well, it's three, right? So we've got one two, three eighth notes. We've got the rhythmic value of three, three eighth notes under this dotted quarter rest, right? And then over here, we've just got one more, right? So we've just got two, or we've just got one eighth note here. And then, and we're resting for all of this. So collectively, we're resting for a period of four eighth notes. We're, we're resting for the same amount of rhythmic value of four eighth notes, okay? So let me ask you, couldn't I have written this measure up here like this, where I have a half rest, half rest to start us out, and then just have two eighth notes? Okay? Couldn't I have written that? And the way to the way I guess to tell about this is is well we'll put in our beat analysis and we'll figure out uh, if it if all the beat analysis comes out the same. So we start with this half rest on one. Now two goes into our no man's land. Okay, because we've got one two three and then our fourth eighth note happens still within this this half rest. So two is going to go in no man's land. And now for our green arrows we just have are two upbeats. Okay, so all this analysis is the same for from this measure to another. So I guess the the answer is that I I absolutely could have written written this measure this way because these two things are equal. They these two things are you know are you know equal. They they are the same thing. You could you would play them the same way, but Look at this two, because this two is out in no man's land, it's a bit harder to read, isn't it? Because in this example, we can really clearly see beat one is here, beat two is here. So in this example, it, this is just a little bit harder to read, and so we really wouldn't write this. You really, if, if you see something like this, it's, you know, it's really because the uh, the engraver or the person using the notation software has kind of made a mistake, really, because you know you can write you can write it write this and you know it's you know it is musically equivalent, but this is it's really always written this way that I've written it up here where we divide out these rests so it's really clearly you can really clearly see that we're resting for all of beat one and we're resting for the downbeat of beat two. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to kind of have a little aside 
right there on that. This is more, uh, you know, if you're interesting, if you're interested in uh, writing music or arranging music, I think that this is, you know, stuff like this. It's really important to have a good grasp on. Uh, or a good grasp of the concepts and why we do this. But at the same time, I think it's important to realize that we can write these things a different way. You know, we can write these rhythmic examples in a different way, and they will sound the same, but there are ways that, that, they're, there are ways that you can express them that they're a bit easier to, uh, to make sense of. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to have uh, that little aside uh, hopefully you found it interesting. If you didn't, no big deal. As I said, this is, you know, mainly going to be useful for people that are interested in arranging and composing. Uh, and hopefully you are interested in arranging and composing. I'm going to start my, uh, new copy of, uh, my new, uh, notation software came in a couple of days ago. So I'm really excited to start up with our transcription and arranging and composing playlist pretty soon. So uh, anyway, hopefully uh, you found this interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.